Fifty years ago, Olivier Giscard d'Estaing became the founding dean of INSEAD, and he also became the school's director general. Today, he is the chairman of the INSEAD Foundation, and he joined us at Founders Day. What um, convinced you to take on the challenge of creating a business school? That couldn't have been an easy task. Why did you decide to do it? Well, you know, when I was a young man, a student, I wanted to learn about management and there was nothing, no school existing in France or in Europe for that purpose. So we asked, where can you go? And uh, we found out that it was only in the United States, practically. So I went to Harvard Business School and I was fascinated by the school, which was a tremendous change from what type of education we were used to have in, in, the, in the continent. So when I came back, I started in industry. I was in steel business, involved in the European CECA, you know, the construction of the common market for the steel. And uh, uh, I tried to sell the idea to Sciences Po uh, to have, because they are preparing for public administration, and I said we need for private administration. But they didn't go for that. So with General Professor D Georges Doriot, uh, with and Claude Janssen, the three of us tried to think how could we have something like Harvard in France. And uh, Georges Doriot was able to convince the Chamber of Commerce of Paris to do it. And then we searched for a dean. And uh, we couldn't find someone with the exact profile uh, we wish. So they say, can you take it over? And I say, I thought I would make my career in industry, but I'd be very happy to, to take the challenge. And was it a challenge? Did, was it fun? Oh, yes, because you saw, we said, we, we have no program, no teacher, no students. How can you attract people in France to learn modern management? It was a big challenge and no money, of course. Uh, we had a very small uh, budget to start. Where did you get the financial support? Well, it came from the Chamber of Commerce of Paris. That's uh, President Jean Marcoux was able to convince them to invest for the preparatory year and the first operating year. So we had a small budget for one year uh, with the staff. There was uh, the ambassador Postumus Meyers, who was the first general manager, and I was next to him. And we had a secretary and an office at the Chamber of Commerce. And then we started traveling, going around and building uh, the school and looking for professors and students, candidates. So we worked on that budget. And after that, the the Chamber of Commerce said, uh, we will help you for the first year, but you need to find support from business. Because if the business community doesn't want it, there's no point to go ahead. So we start looking for that. So who were some of your first, and your early ones? The, well, the first one was uh, Pechinet with Mr. de Vitry, Saint-Gobain with Mr. de Vaugué, uh, nationalized banks, the French banks, and very quickly later, we had uh, IBM, McKinsey, and the foundation Ford, Ford Foundation, that came uh, a little bit later. But we never asked any public fund from France or from any other country. We want to stand up on our own legs. And, and so that's one of the ways that INSEAD was different from the very beginning. Yes. So indeed. what are some of the other things that make INSEAD different then and today? Well, first, uh, we were pioneering in having a campus outside of Paris because most of the, all our grandes écoles, the French grandes écoles, had their school down in Paris, Rue Descartes for Polytechnique and HSC, all of them. So the Chamber of Commerce said we will use some of our classrooms in Paris. And I said, no, 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 we need a campus. So they told me, find it. So we looked around and we found Fontainebleau and we thought it was an ideal place to be, but it was a very in, a, a new initiative for a French education uh, school program. Then the, the method was very different because we had the case method and not the traditional ex cathedra courses. Then our professors were coming from business and that was also innovating because uh, we wanted to be as close as business as possible no theory, practical approach to top management. Mm -hmm. Then the great novelty was the fact that we were fully international. We avoided any national domination of any sort, even French. 
we had three working languages, French, English, and German, and our participants and professors should be able to communicate in those three languages. Uh, we avoided to have more than one third of the student or the professors coming from one country. Uh, so the French was not at all dominant right at the beginning. We gave the image of being completely multinational. And that was very important, very innovative. Then in many of our policies of, for instance, the selection of the candidates, uh, instead of having concours, you know, as it's usually the case, uh, we made it by interview. And uh, we tried to appraise not only the intellectual ability, but also the character, integrity, leadership potential, ability to communicate with others, and so on. So it was a complex system of uh, selection, which was innovating as well. So those don't look so innovative now, because there are many people who followed the models. But I can tell you, 50 years ago, it was quite new. How, how do you think INSEAD has turned out now 50 years? Looking back, has it met your dreams and expectations? Oh, yes, uh, yes. You, you, actually, people say, are you surprised? With I say, no, because I had the dimension of Harvard. When I was at Harvard Business School, we had an MBA class of 600. It was a two-year program, so there were 1,200 people on the campus. We had a big library, we had classroom facilities, and all that I had in my mind. So it was a model. The difference we made to, for Harvard was this multinational approach, systematic. Instead, Harvard is still more American labeled, uh, I would say, in spite of the fact that they have many students and teachers from different continents nowadays. But that was the innovation we brought as compared to Harvard. So finally now we have reached the same level than Harvard Business School. So for me, it's not so surprising. So uh, I didn't expect to have campus outside of Europe, actually. That's a new thing that I didn't think of. And I think it was a very important move. We supported strongly, of course, with the foundation. And going forward, if you could make a chart, chart the movement for the next 50 years, what would you like to see the school do? First is to promote certain values. It's not only to make business. It's a philosophy that the business is a very important part of society because it models the society. And uh, it's not only a question of money and profit, it's a question of creation, of uh, adjusting the products to the fundamental needs of society, which deal with uh, health, education, uh, many other things than just industry and lots of services. So I think the move is uh, still a very important link to industry. I believe it's a source of production and research. They, they make the world different in communication, transportation, in daily life, quality of life. So there is a tremendous still effort of research to be conducted to make this planet livable. And I think it's the rule of business, much more than any other part of uh, the societies. Thank you very much, Olivier Giscard d'Estaing, for being with us.